In this week's episode of Superhero Saturday, we are diving into the pages of comic books and examining what the essential elements are for designing your own work of art in a comic book style. Hello, super friends, and welcome back to another episode of Superhero Saturday, where we talk about the arts of superheroes, storytelling, and so much more. Here's a little bit of a confession for you in case I haven't mentioned this before, because I don't mention it often, but I actually haven't read that many comic books. I do read a fair amount of graphic novels, and there's a few that I've read quite recently that are excellent, and I love the concept of combining drawings with storytelling in a way that is a little bit of a more long form storytelling than just a few quick pages because I like to get into the meat of the actual story a little bit more than I like to focus on the art itself, although it is very beautiful. But honestly, it doesn't take a lot to learn the functions and the style of creating a traditional comic book style setting on a paper. So to get you guys up to speed, I'm just gonna give you kind of the rundown on how to create a comic book style page so that you can tell your own story, whether it's in a single panel, you know, cartoon comic, or if it's in, uh, you know, several page ongoing web series, or even if it's your own graphic novel. Like I've said previously on this channel, with all kinds of art forms, whatever medium you're starting with, inspiration can strike you anywhere. So we're not gonna go through a list and say these are the things that you need to do to get started, and these are step-by-step -step instructions, but rather I'm gonna give you all the different elements of what's needed when designing a comic book. And then at the end, I'll give you kind of an overview of what I usually do in my own process so that maybe it's something that you can try and work out your own process for yourself. The first thing that you have to decide when designing your own comic book is to pick what your canvas is going to be. Traditionally, comic books were a fine art form as opposed to digital artwork. So they took regular paper and pens and ink and pencils and they put them together on paper in the physical world and then turned those into print copies. If you're a traditional artist, that totally works and fits in with the classic style. If you're more of a modernist and do a little bit of digital artwork like myself, then a completely digital page is totally cool too. You can even use uh, different programs to help you render your artwork and arrange your elements on the page. Or you can go somewhere in between, which is actually where I've been before. Whatever way you choose, you're going to need to start out by picking a size as well. So if you're wanting to draw like a, a one panel, you might choose something, you know, kind of in portrait style and just draw one thing on the page to get your idea across. Or you might do a comic strip style and do a couple of panels in a row and then go across. Or you can go graphic novel style, comic book style, and do eight and a half by 11-ish uh, work of paper. Really, you can pick whatever size and shape that you want because you're the creator, but uh, more of the traditional comic book style is about you know, six inches by nine inches. So that might be one of the sizes that you pick to start out with and start experimenting with your own style. The next, hello kitty cat. Come say hi to the camera, kitty cat. Come here. Whoa. Hey, guess what? It's a kitty cat. Hey, guess what? It's a kitty cat. Hey, guess what? It's a kitty cat. It's a kitty, 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 kitty cat. The next element you might want to consider is the style of your panels. A panel in a comic book is basically a frame in which you draw your images and convey what's going on. This is your mini canvas, your canvas by the moment. Typically these black boxes kind of delineate each of the different moments from each of the different scenes and kind of give you one second glimpse into what's going on in the story. Very traditionally, in the like really old school comic book styles, you just have a series of the same size and shape frames all in a row. And in between those frames that are, you know, just basically black boxes, you have white space on the page, which are called gutters. And all of your dialogue, your action, everything that happens in the comics happens inside those frames. 
It's basically a storyboarding kind of story, except that instead of getting turned into some kind of action, it's that it on the page. You see the story through the art drawn by the artists. These panels are typically read in English from upper left to bottom right. So you can see from this diagram, you go from the top and zigzag along as if you're reading just traditional prose and ending up at the bottom of the page. That kind of helps you see which sequence the frames or moments happen in order and you can just follow along as they go. Over the years in the course of history and the development as artists began to experiment and improve and add their own flair to the style of making comic books, these boxes began to change a little bit. The boxes shifted in size and sometimes they would get bigger and smaller or be different shapes or expand all the way into the corners. Some of these panels even have artwork that stretches the complete page all the way off to the edge and these are called splash pages. Some even go the whole length of the book as if you were to open it up and see one complete panel across the whole inside and those are called spreads. You can also layer panels on top of each other and arrange them in different orders and things like that. Go wild with your creativity. But you may want to consider sticking at least a little bit closer to the traditional upper left to right kind of order of timing, uh, just so that your readers can immediately understand what order to read all of the stuff in so that they don't get lost in the timeline, unless that's what you're going for. Generally speaking, you can have anywhere from about three to 10 different panels on a page or even as few as one or two. Uh, but I suggest if you are making a, you know, rather close to traditional size comic book page, don't go too many more than that because the more frames that you have, the smaller the action appears to the reader and it might get a little bit more challenging to read that way. Speaking of reading, the next element of creating a comic book is having text on the page. This includes speech, dialogue, narration, and onomatopoeia. Again, in English, this is typically read from upper left to lower right, so you'll want to organize whatever dialogue, whatever script is happening on the page in that kind of order. So, for example, if you put a word or phrase up here, that will typically happen before a word or phrase down here. For speech bubbles and thought bubbles, these are ways to convey what a character is either saying out loud or thinking in their heads. And they typically have tails that point more or less toward the character and or their mouth to indicate which person is saying this stuff. There are also caption boxes which can either uh, provide extra dialogue space for a character that maybe isn't in the frame but is understood to be talking at a time, and that usually is in quotes, or providing context for the reader to understand what is going on. For whatever reason, these caption boxes tend to be yellow backgrounds. I think that it's just to make it pop a little bit off of the page so that the reader understands that this isn't part of the artwork. Whereas speech bubbles and thought bubbles, they're a little bit more integrated. And then you also have the classic comic book styling of onomatopoeia, which is action words or phrases that really pop out and indicate action. Pop, pow, bang, zap, boom, pow, swish, thwip, snicked. Apparently the comic book writer Stan Lee loved making up original types of onomatopoeia and reusing them to kind of create a sort of action catchphrase for different characters. They can happen in the page outside of speech bubbles and thought bubbles because they're actually noises that are just happening in the action. They can have all sorts of really cool coloration to indicate, you know, the intensity of the sound or the feel of the sound or the volume and the texture of the sound. The font of these different things is also kind of uh, stylized for comic books specifically. When we're talking about most general lettering on the page, there's usually a type of kind of handwritten looking font that is used because back in the days of original handwritten comic books, these words were actually handwritten out by someone whose job was to be the letterer or the person who writes in the letters on the page. However, in the modern era, we can use all sorts of fonts at our disposal and use them digitally and adjust them and move them around and make them bigger or smaller, emphasize and all kinds of things. So you might consider using some of those to indicate different types of voice and style and sounds. The next and probably most iconic of these elements is of course the artwork itself. The way that the artist draws the characters and the action and the interactions between 
characters and things and events during the course of the story. Now, if you want to get a little bit of a hint of different types of styles for these different eras of comic books in the past, you can take a look at my History of Superhero Costumes video series, which is on my channel. But the specific art form for each of these different things can really be nowadays any consistent style that you want to use. It can be very simplistic, very cartoonish, you know, two-dimensional looking, or it can be really complex fine art watercolors or even multimedia put together, or it could be some kind of digitally rendered or created style. As long as you have a consistent way to present your characters and the action happening in the story, that is the artwork that is going into your book. And it really distinguishes it from a bunch of other types of works. But if it's in comic book format, it's easy for the reader to see both the artwork and the story at the same time. And the final element of creating your own comic book is, of course, creating a story. And you can see my channel for a lot of hints and tips and tricks about creating your own characters and story arcs and following or unfollowing certain tropes that are present in a lot of superhero or comic book related stories. However, at this point, I want to note that comic books were traditionally created by teams of people, not just individuals. And even nowadays, there's usually at least two people who are working on the story. Primarily, say, for example, the writer of the story and the artist who creates the, you know, actual piece of art that tells the story. If you're trying to create your own comic book or graphic novel or comic strip by yourself, you don't need to worry about all that because you can handle it all on yourself. It's just a matter of taking the time to do the story and the artwork and the lettering and putting things together in the way that you can, in the time that you can, in the style that is yours. Back when I was uh, starting out my work on my book series in Fearless Nine, it was actually a web series and I drew a page of a comic book every, you know, couple of days. But each of those pages that took about three or four hours to make were only a few seconds of action as if it were translated into video format. So to tell a long story, it would take like hours and hours and thousands of hours to put together into a comic book or graphic novel style. Which is why I switched over to traditional prose and started writing that way because my story got way ahead of where my artwork was coming out. All of this to say that you're going to want to find a story that you can tell uh, that is compelling to you, but tell it in a way that takes up as little time space as possible. In other words, that you can get across in just a few pages and make as powerful and potent as possible to get that story across as quickly as you can while not sacrificing the story. It's a really interesting balance and all I can say is that you gotta practice it for a little while and see what kind of pacing works for you in your story. So with all of those elements together, how do you even get started? Do you start out with the artwork or do you start out with the story or do you start out with the dialogue or what? <laughs> Like I said earlier, and like I say all the time, the creative process can strike you at any point in the story, whether it, you come up with a really cool sketch that starts you off with a character and then you build a story around that, or vice versa, or from wherever you wanna go. I've found that once I figure out my inspiration and start uh, figuring out the story that goes along with it, the best way for me to start telling that story in a comic book style format is to start off with the canvas, and start sketching out some of the frames and highlight the important moments with bigger frames or do whatever stylistic things I wanna do. Then layer in the pencil work for what the art is going to be and then write the dialogue after that and kind of fit it in around the uh, artwork that I've kind of sketched out. After that's all done, then I start layering on the line work and the ink and kind of finalizing all of that stuff down so that everything works kind of together. If you start out with the art and don't give any thought to where the speech bubblers are gonna be or how much dialogue is happening in a page, then you might find that you have a lot more dialogue to the page than can actually fit legibly on the page around the artwork without you know, blocking some important things of what you've drawn. And vice versa, you may need to uh, find a moment that is really artistically powerful if it like, for example, doesn't have any dialogue for this frame. Uh, but if you think about those as the, each frame as being a line of dialogue, then you might end up having 
uh, not enough space to put in the artwork in the pauses that you really want to have. And again, I usually use uh, digital art, which makes putting things on the page and rearranging them even after I start finalizing things a lot easier because I can go through the different layers and make adjustments as I go along. If you're working with traditional or you're kind of doing a mixed media by starting out with hand-drawn stuff and adding digital lettering on top of it, Again, you might want to think about the same kind of thing and consider how much dialogue or text is going to be on a page, how many big pop word art type things are going to be there, and sketch it out lightly with a pencil or even a light blue pencil to kind of get a feel for the shapes before you start laying down the finalized layers. Then you can go back into the computer and layer things on top if you want, or even just go ahead and uh, hand write in all the letterings, which is kind of cool too, because sometimes your own handwriting can become kind of a custom font between you and the readers, and they might be able to recognize your handwriting right away and identify with it, with the story. In the end, what you'll want to do is assemble all of your pages in some kind of format, whether it's an actual, you know, tangible comic book that's printed off or, you know, bound together or in some kind of digital saved file and present it to your readers and see what they think. In the end, that's really all it takes to create a comic book that fits with comic book style, graphic novel style uh, artwork. Have any of you ever made a comic book, Super Friends, or some kind of cartoon or webcomic? What was your process, and uh, do you have any tips for us that have worked for you, but uh, maybe you haven't heard of before? What are you currently working on, and what are you reading for inspiration? Go ahead and pop those down in the comments below, and we'll continue the conversation there. And thanks so much for watching, Super Friends. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more superhero content every single Saturday. You can join the team by following us on social media or by supporting us over on Patreon. And if you want to see my own superheroic characters in action, no longer in the web comic form, but rather in a traditional novel, then you can go to our website at www.fearless9.com or you can pick up some books that may just contain your new favorite characters. Thanks again for watching, Super Friends, and we'll see you next time.